Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, the expressions for 3D space truss can be easily obtained uh, by extension from 2D plane truss equations. So we don't need to do all the hard work that we did in the case of planar truss. Uh, if you recall, we had this this equation for transformation. A transformation is always required in the case of truss, and uh, it will be no different for two D or three D situations. Now here I'm writing. The transformation equations for a 2D truss and uh, the transformation is between the global coordinate system x0, y0 and local coordinate system x, y. This local coordinate system will be changing uh, for each truss element they will be different but the global will be the same. And uh, these are the displacement components in the local coordinate system. Local coordinate system x, y. This is needed because the strains, stresses are along the length of the truss element. And uh, these are the global coordinates, coordinate system x0, y0. These are needed because we need to be able to assemble all the elements. Uh, each element will have a different orientation. In order for you to be able to combine them all in one system, you need a global coordinate system. Otherwise, the currency won't match and there's no way of adding the uh, each local equation with, each, with the other element because each will have different orientations. Now here, if we, <coughs> this alpha and beta are the angles between the coordinate system. So if you have this uh, direction cosines cos alpha m is cos beta and uh, we have this trigonometric relation and because the and this alpha plus beta is equal to 90. So you have this L square plus m square is equal to 1. It's always the case. Now if this is the transformation between local and global. Then by progression of steps, we had reached this situation that for a stiffness matrix in the global system, because global system is what we need for the assembly. And then we have to make each elemental stiffness matrix in the global system so that we are able to add them all together at one place. Once that is done, boundary conditions are applied, then the solution is carried out and you know the displacements in the global coordinate system and at that point you come back to the local coordinate system with this kind of a transformation and the stresses and strains are find, found out in that system so you you are familiar with that kind of process this is just a summary of that so this turned out to be And because it's symmetric, so you have these this is this is the stiffness matrix for each element in the global coordinate system. And uh, 
one makes life easier for oneself if one has easy expressions for L and this L. A and E are obviously given to you and uh, if your system is if your element because there are two nodes I and J and the coordinates are X naught I Y I naught and here you have X J naught Y these are the coordinates then it makes life much easier if you use this expression this is your length and uh, L is simply X J naught minus X I naught over L these are all expressions that we have already seen in our 2D analysis. That's, that covers basically the 2D system. Now because we have already mentioned that uh, there's an easy extension from 2D to 3D system, let's see how that works out. So for 3D obviously the first change is that you have uh, if we talk about the global coordinate system then obviously you'll have a z naught axis also and uh, if we talk about the orientation of the element it can now be oriented in three different directions as opposed to the planar system now this is the let's say this is i node this is j node and the components in the global system will be x naught is j naught y j naught and z j naught here this is a new coordinate because it wasn't there for 2d obviously here it is x i naught y i naught z i naught and uh, the angles with this this element makes with the x axis is called alpha with y naught axis is called beta and with z naught axis is called gamma and the direction cosines now will be 3 cos alpha because these are the same as the 2D system but here you also have cos gamma and the property L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1 and that will still hold. Now where you for 2D system where you had this local transformation from global to local there are four coordinates in the global x and y coordinates the uh, x and y components of the displacement on i node and j node so that you have four here for global you'll have six because each node will have three uh, displacement components so obviously this expression needs to be changed a little but the local system doesn't change because as far as the as far as along the length of the element ij is concerned what we're talking about the local system then the displacement is only in the x direction of the local system because it's just a extension or a compression so we'll use the same expression but we'll have to add w here w here and n will come here otherwise it's the same exactly the same thinking process now we have l m n 0 0 0 0 0 0 l m n and here you have now u i naught v i naught w i naught this is a new one u j naught v j naught w j naught this is your again local global and the thinking process is the same you will need to convert all the elements into first to global system add them together uh, apply boundary conditions then uh, solve for the displacements in the global system then finally for each element you convert to local system and then you find out the strains and the stresses so if you go through this process then k naught because you need expression for stiffness in the global system not local system otherwise you won't be able to add them together 
this comes out to be and this can be verified slightly bigger obviously the dimensions should be 6 by 6 in this case which is very obvious now you have m square mn minus lm minus m square minus mn then you have n square minus ln minus mn minus n square l square lm ln n square mn and I'm sorry m square this should be m square this is n square yes that is correct and because it is symmetric uh, you, you can write symm symmetric here or just lm ln minus l square minus lm minus ln and then you have l square mn minus lm minus m square minus mn and uh, minus ln minus mn minus n square lm ln and mn this is your 6 by 6 matrix and it makes sense because in the global system each element there's two nodes so each node has three degrees of freedom so you have six your, your, your displacement and force vectors should be six into one and your dis, your uh, stiffness matrix matrices should be six into six so that makes sense now this is pretty much all you need to do all you need to know to deal with truss uh, 3d truss elements except one point if you recall in uh, the glow in the 2d systems uh, we had mentioned that only two kinds of forces can be handled in a truss situation one was the nodal forces obviously if you have this uh, let, let me draw here for example this sort of a system is there uh, let's draw a simple 3d system any doesn't matter let's say that this is there's an element here there's pin joint here then there's an element here pin joint pin joint and you can have also elements here and all sorts of you can have other stages also but I think this should be enough to illustrate the point so now you have forces here or you have force here or this is fixed for example this is fixed uh, this is fixed in let's say that if it's x naught y naught z naught then what we're talking about here is that uh, fixed in let's say x naught y naught direction this is fixed in x naught y naught z naught direction for example it doesn't matter the forces are uh, uh, let's call this this one not this here there's a force here force there's a force here f1 f2 whatever so obviously these nodal forces are allowed nodal forces can be applied obviously and temperature changes are allowed which again cause a force vector to be added on the right hand side right hand side of this k u is equal to f matrix and here we are talking about k naught system and ultimately after assembly and they will call system but for the element level you need to have k u is equal to f on an element level also so on the right hand side you need to apply the nodal forces and this is done after you complete the assembly but the temperature changes they also cause a vector to be added on the right hand side but that is done at the elemental level now no body forces just like 2d system no body forces or pressure forces are allowed for obvious reasons these are two force members you cannot allow forces to be applied to these members in this direction at the nodes you can but 
not here the weight would apply here so it will become a beam it won't be a two force member so those forces are not allowed so this nodal forces these will be uh, this, this temperature changes these will be applied here at the elemental level and once and once you have gathered all these together uh, you have uh, calculated all these elemental level equations then you assemble them after assembly it becomes k naught u naught and this is system this is system this is system now after you have assembled these these are at the elemental level after you have assembled these at the very end you add a concentrated force vector this is done at the very end and here you all only apply the forces that are applied on the nodes these may have components two components or three components but that are just added at the relevant degree of freedom so this is the whole system so this is very familiar to you this process what about the temperature change vector the force vector that causes uh, the, the, the force vector that arises because of the change of temperature. Now, if you recall 2D systems, this had turned out to be E A alpha delta T minus L minus M L M and we had verified this. Uh, we had first derived this and then verified the truth of this by applying it on a uh, example problem. Now here what should 3D system be? It's very obvious now we have obviously this is 4 into 1 for a 3D system the force vectors for each element need to be 6 into 1 obviously and uh, a little concentration will show that it will be nothing but it's just an extent again an extension from our 2D system. That's all. This is 6 into 1. And now we have to put in the third direction cosine 2. Now you have uh, pretty much dealt with the 3D problem of process. Now, just one point here to end this up. Uh, if you try to solve even the simplest of problems in 3D, trust problem in 3D, even if you have three or four elements, each now each element has 6 into 6. A matrix 6 into 6 and each element has this 6 into 6 and each element will have if there is a thermal vector then 6 into 1 and obviously when you assemble them together 3 4 5 elements then it becomes a handful but only as far as the hand calculations are concerned if you do it on the computer however if you understand this there's nothing difficult there's nothing difficult about it any more than uh, dealing with the 2d trust situation is difficult so it's very easy to do. Thank you.